All right, so let's get back into the why I wants for the YouTube channel right here. The series where we go over 2021 draft eligible prospects for the NHL draft. Now, we've already made two videos on to University of Michigan, guys. We did Luke Hughes, and then we did Maddie Beneers. Today, we're breaking the mold and not touching the University of Michigan, because instead, we're taking our eyes over to Sweden, where we talk about a guy who has made himself a home in the Swedish Hockey League, pretty much fighting it out with a few other top NHL prospects in terms of point production. Today's Why I Want video is going over William Eklund, a top prospect at the 2021 NHL Entry Draft, who is already 18 years old. He turned 18, actually, in October of 2002, so he is one of the older players of this draft, but... William Eklund is a 5'10", 172-pound center left-wing player playing for the Jurgarden IF in the Swedish Hockey League. Now, before we get into anything, the points, the projection, the style of play, he's a guy who was ranked 5th by the Consolidated Ranking here on Elite Prospects, 3rd by Elite Prospects themselves, 3rd by Future Considerations, 6th by the Neutral Zone, 10th by McKean's, and then you take a look at some of the other rankings. He's ranked 7th, 5th, some have him at 2nd. He is one of these guys who could very well go first overall, depending on who you ask, but if he's available at three or four or seven, maybe it wouldn't really be too surprising in my opinion. William Eklund is indeed a forward playing in the SHL this season, where with the Jur Gardens IF, he posted up 23 points in 40 games played. Now, the interesting thing you would note about this is you say, hey, wait a minute, Jur Gardens, that's the team that Alexander Holtz, top prospect of the 2020 NHL entry draft and seventh overall pick by the Devils, played on as well. And you would say, yeah. They literally played on the same team, they had some chemistry together, and William Eklund actually outscored Holtz with 5 points on the year. Holtz got 18 points in 40 games, Eklund had 23 in 40. Now that in itself is pretty good. Hey, this is a guy who was outproducing one of the top picks in last year's draft, and he hasn't even been drafted yet, but it actually kind of gets a little bit better than that, because for William Eklund, he's a guy who, in his first 16 games played, had 12 points. So a good chunk of his production came in the very first parts of the year. He wrapped up the rest of the season with 11 more points in 24 games played. So the point production really did trail off from that initial 12 points in 16 game mark. Now, it's actually listed over here on Dauber Prospects that if William Eklund was able to sustain what was 14 points in 19 games in the first half of his SHL season, it would have been up there with the likes of the Sedin twins and Peter Forsberg for SHL production in that age range. Alas, his second half was a lot worse in terms of the point production than his first half, but it will be noted that the Jurgarden's IF hockey team actually did kind of just start playing a little bit worse as the year went on. The cohesion amongst the players wasn't really there, but we'll get into that a little bit later. As we go over what exactly it is William Eklund is, he is a guy who really works hard for the points that he gets. When it comes to his shooting ability, hey, the guy can absolutely shoot a puck either via the one-timer or with a nice wrist shot. The biggest part about his overall shooting ability is that he takes the opportunities that are there. He's a guy who's very aware out there on the ice, and when you have a guy in the offensive zone like Eklund, he's the kind of player that if you give him the space to walk in towards the goal, he'll take it. He'll come in, he'll shoot it, boom, either in the back of the net, sets up a rebound or whatever, but if you don't give him that shooting lane, what he'll do is he'll scan his other options. He is very aware out there, and it's why he is such a talented playmaker as well. If you don't give him that shooting lane, hey, there's a passing option over onto the right, he'll take that opportunity there to try to set up a guy on the side and maybe get himself an assist. Away from the puck, he's a guy who has a pretty good motor. He's always skating, he's always battling, he's either in the boards trying to get the puck free, or if his team has the puck, he'll be looking around the offensive zone for another opportunity. He'll be scanning the ice and positioning himself in a way that opens himself up to create more offense. Here's the scouting report from Dauber Prospects. Eklund has the shooting ability to be a legitimate goal scorer threat, as well as the creativity and playmaking talent to be the facilitator. He plays with speed and pace, often overwhelming, less talent talented defenders with his persistence and desire to play in the middle of the ice and around the net. He finds himself space with good body positioning and the ability to bounce off defenders. He battles hard down low and doesn't give up on plays often, making him a hassle on nearly every shift. 
Despite the fact that he is only 5'10", he still is one of these guys who could become a very strong candidate for a top three selection at this draft. And going into the long-term future, you take a look at the persistence when he doesn't have the puck, the offensive awareness to create plays, shoot pucks, and position himself properly in the offensive zone, and just the overwhelming amount of success he had had at the SHL level at such a young age, you see this guy and you're like, darn, this guy could be a potential top six offensive contributor who can put up some big numbers at the NHL level, especially with the fact that Holtz is already supposed to be one of these top producers out of the 2020 draft and Eklund was already outproducing him. I get that points aren't the only thing you gotta take a look at though, but just for argument's sake, going over to the SHL all-time list for U19 players in this league, William Eklund's season this year was better than Dominic Bach's season after his draft. He's a top prospect for the Carolina Hurricanes, initially selected by the St. Louis Blues, and I'd say that's pretty good company, especially for a guy who hasn't been drafted yet. Talking about drafted prospects, hey, Eklund's production in his draft year was actually better than Jakob Vrana's production in Vrana's draft plus one. So right away, just in terms of the year progression with the NHL ages, he had a better season than Vrana when Vrana was a year above, so that's pretty good too. The guy who comes the closest to actually matching the number, though, is Elias Lindholm. In 2012-13, Elias Lindholm had a slightly higher point per game mark than Eklund this year, and Lindholm went fifth overall. You can see what he is doing now in the NHL with the Flames, a 30-goal scorer some years, just under a point per game kind of guy. I'd say that's a pretty good NHL player right there. And so for William Eklund, the guy was out there producing points. He's got a really good skill set and all this. But I wanted to highlight one more point that is actually from Scouching and his Eklund video, talking about just how poorer the Jure Gardens play was towards the end of the season compared to the first half. You would take a look at the decline in production from William Eklund and say, oh, what happened to this guy? But contrary to what you might think, it's not that Eklund himself just dipped in terms of his overall ability in the second half of the season compared to the first, but rather the overall Jure Gardens team as a whole started to kind of lose that cohesion as the year went on. Therefore, for Eklund, as a guy who plays on this team, he just ended up suffering the consequences of playing on a team that didn't really have that same oomph to their game compared to when they first started out. Eklund's overall level of play kind of stayed the same, it's just the team played worse. Therefore, the perspective is brought up as to whether or not Eklund would or could be the guy who drives a line, the guy who goes out there and does things himself. Is he that guy to carry a bad team into prosperity, or is he a guy whom you add to an already pretty good scoring line and you use him in a position that allows him to prosper off the talents that you already have? If you're a team that already has a pretty good forward core and some good youthful pieces to build around, hey, adding an Eklund onto your squad really doesn't sound like a bad idea if you already have guys who can give them the puck in open space or who can position themselves when they don't have the puck, opening themselves up for a beautiful pass from Eklund himself. He's a very interesting offensive player who's got some really good tools all over the ice with the puck, without the puck, in the offensive zone and the defensive zone, and it's why he's one of the top guys in the 2021 NHL entry draft. There's no question in my mind, with more time in the SHL, with more experience under his belt, William Eklund will find himself a way to up those numbers, probably to a more consistent level. It's kind of scary because the overall development that he has had in 2020-2021 hasn't been the best because he actually was supposed to go to the World Juniors, but then he got a positive test, which is why he got sent back. He tested negative immediately after that, which is why he was thrusted back into the SHL. It was kind of up and down in a weird way for William Eklund, so hopefully his 2021-2022 is a lot more smooth. But with a smoother year, I would expect a little bit more of a more linear kind of year, one that's easier to build up upon and make progress with it. Not like the one that he had this year where he was up and down, positive tests, negative tests. Yeah, you never like to see that, especially in today's circumstances with the world. But talk to me in the comments what you think about William Eklund. Do you want your team to draft this guy? And if so, what is the highest you would be able to take him? We have some people who would say that he is probably worth a second overall pick. Some have him in the 6, 7, 8 range. So it really depends. He obviously is one of these guys who could go super high or a little bit later. It really depends on who you ask. But talk to me in the comments what you think personally about William Eklund. I hope you enjoyed this Vishash Rolls in the I9. And bye.